Well, good morning, YouTube. Hi, guys. Today's video, we're finally going to do some work on the struggle bus. Now, don't get too excited. What we're working on today isn't some, like, really cool modification project or anything like that. But, as I mentioned in a previous video, when Talon and I were working on the trailer, Gabe is coming. And he's going to be here in a couple of days now. And we've got to get this thing livable for him. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Talon and I pulled the, the camper out from where it was parked, got it over here, and tried to go through it because we had some water leaks, if you guys remember, in the uh, roadkill episodes bringing it back from South Dakota. So we got in there, we found a couple leaks at the water pump, which I'll show you guys in just a second. And then we also found that the kitchen faucet had a split in the line where it looks like it had been frozen. And so once we did get the one leak fixed, we powered up the water system, water just sprayed everywhere. And as you can see, it is an absolutely beautiful day here again, just like it was when we were unloading the tractor the other day. Unfortunately, later that night, it started to rain and it rained for two days straight. Um, in fact, you can see my yard, my yard is a swamp right now. Yeah, I'm over the rain, it's just been too much. Um, the only nice thing about having that much rain is that uh, the creek is full and flowing pretty fast. So after we finished unloading the tractor the other day, we went in ahead and moved the struggle bus over here next to the house where I think it's going to stay at least for the duration of Gabriel's visit. I still got to get power hooked up to it. I got to get the water faucet uh, replaced and just make sure it's livable. Like I said, no customization today. We just need to make it livable for our house guests. Unfortunately, like I said, my yard is a slippery, sloppy mess right now. And what I don't want to do is track a bunch of mud into the struggle bus. So I think before we get started, I'm going to find something to put here as a step one, because the, the door is a little bit high off the ground, but also something that we can kind of wipe our feet on before we go in and out and hopefully not mess up the inside. All right, guys, there's the solution for our step at the moment. Keeps us out of the mud and a place to wipe our feet. And unfortunately, we have a problem. So as soon as I got the step there and I came in the first time, I noticed that things in here were wet. And uh, if you look up here, we got water coming in somewhere, which I don't remember coming in before. This chair was all wet. The box of the new faucet was wet. The top of this table is soaking wet. And the bottom of this cabinet is dripping. definitely wet inside the cabinet. So the question is, where's the water coming from? This cabinet is dry. Well, almost dry. Definitely worse on this side. All right guys, so down here underneath one of the beds in the back is where the water pump is. And we had to fix this connection right here. For some reason, they had this assembly put in there with this hose coming up vented with a valve on it. So I don't, don't really know what it was for it was before the pump so if they were to open this valve all it would do was create an air leak and it wouldn't suck water so I, I don't know what they were trying to do but it wasn't the right thing to do and it was leaking like in multiple places so we took it all out reconfigured it and got that leak fixed and that's when we found out that the kitchen sink had sprung a leak as soon as we turned on the water pressure so not easy to get to the faucet sits on here. I had to go through the garbage hole to get the one fitting because there's not much room to work down in here. You see I've got a couple towels in there still to catch the water. Now this is the old faucet and these were the copper lines coming down and these weird fittings on it which were not right. And here's the other line and if you look closely right there, there we go. That was the split in the pipe that was spraying water everywhere. All right, so the faucet comes with a new base plate, and you can see when I put it over the hole, still got the markings from where the old one was, so we're going to try to clean that up before we install it. Also, the new faucet has compression-style fittings on it, as opposed to this fitting that was on the old faucet. So what I've done 
is I've went and got some adapters that will screw on to where those originally screwed on to, and then our compression fittings will then thread onto them. So we're going to get some sealant and put all that together as well. And a slightly interesting note with this faucet, normally where this part here goes through the counter, there's going to be a large nut and usually a washer that go on this that you would tighten up to clamp it to the actual countertop. This one, however, is coming with this weird assembly. And when this presses down like that, it actually squeezes the threaded part on the inside so it grabs the thread. So you can slide it right up, put pressure on it, twist it really quick and tighten it. No tools. It's got a grip. Never seen that before. All right, guys. I know that there's also a little leak in this fitting right here somewhere too, but the faucet was leaking so bad that I wasn't able to pinpoint it. So we got to fix the faucet, turn the water on, and then we'll see where that one's leaking from. Well, guys, it was a pain in the butt to get those fittings on there. I even had to employ the services of Derek because he's a lot smaller than I am to be able to reach in there and wrap the Teflon tape around the fitting because I couldn't get in there with both hands and trying to do it with one hand was just almost impossible. And then when I went to actually put the faucet into the countertop, the hole was a little bit too small. So a rat tail file just cleaned it up a little bit and then it went in pretty good. So now we're gonna make all of our final connections. Well, guess what? More leaks. All right, so I pulled out that bad piece, guys. I don't know if you can see, but look at this split. It's going all the way down this, almost to where I cut it. You know, this poly pipe is junk. You know, they used it back in the days. I'm pretty sure you're not even allowed to use this stuff anymore. So we probably will not use this when we replace it. We'll most likely use PEX to replace it with because PEX is gonna last a lot longer. And now that I know that this coach is plumbed all with poly, one of my uh, projects is going to be to completely replumb the thing. But right now, we just got to get livable for the weekend. But it seems like, you know, we fixed one leak just to find another one. And we just got to keep fixing one until we get the whole system up to full pressure. However, it does look like the new sink faucet is not leaking. But again, it's hard to tell because of full pressure. Though there is a fitting under the sink that I showed you in the clip there that was leaking. We're going to bypass all that as well and route it differently and replace this. But... That's going to all have to be in another day because we don't have time to go to the store and get what we need and uh, make it back before the sun sets. So we're going to close this one here and continue it on another day. So remember, if you guys want your Amsoil Adam merchandise, go to the website and get it. I've got a lot in the inventory still and uh, I'd be more than glad to get you guys some out before Christmas. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next time we see you, keep those engines running. And until we can get up there and seal that roof better, blue tarp it is.